at home with Avor's housing economist, Claire Losey. All right, guys, we're back with another Driving at Home with Dr. Claire Losey. Claire, I think we said last week we were going to tee up a conversation on the jobs report. What did that report show for us this week or last week, I should say? Indeed. So the May jobs report certainly sent mixed signals to the broader economy. On the one hand, hiring was very robust. It came in stronger than anticipated. About 339,000 jobs were added to the economy in May, which was nearly double the previously anticipated 195,000 jobs, so well surpassing the expected figure. However, the unemployment rate actually ticked up to a seven-month high of 3.7%, which is still well below its long-term average of 5.7%. And meanwhile, growth in average hourly earnings decelerated modestly to 4.3% from 4.4% in April. So some early indications that the labor market is slowing, is cooling, but overall still a relatively robust labor market across the U.S. And while May jobs numbers have not yet been released for the Austin region, we can compare Austin's labor market performance for the U.S. to that of Austin, in, or we can compare April's labor market performance in the U.S. to that of Austin. So in April, the jobs growth rate in Austin measured about 3.3% versus approximately 2% for the U.S. So in other words, employment in Austin outperformed that of the U.S. in April. So we'll see what happens in May. We won't get those Austin jobs numbers for another couple weeks. How do we reconcile that gap between the total number of jobs added to market and the unemployment rate? That seems like an odd conflict. Right. So there are two different surveys that are taken to measure job growth or just employment numbers in general. One is a household survey, which is, of course, surveying individual households and is inquiring about their employment status. And then the second of which is an establishment survey, which is surveying businesses. And so there's a little bit of discrepancy in the statistical analysis embedded in either survey. And sometimes it can lead to those larger discrepancies that we see between the jobs numbers versus the unemployment rate, for example. Okay. And then you speaking to Austin kind of uh, as in terms of our labor market prior outperforming, we see that consistent in the housing market as well. I mean, that's sort of the the headline for us is that we continue to outpace the rest of the country, just as we've talked about before. The potential for a recession also means the potential for a less impactful recession in this area as opposed to other markets. Right. And so we should be clear, the Austin labor market continues to perform other major MSAs in in Texas. In fact, all other MSAs in Texas, and it continues to perform that of the U.S. When we talk about how well positioned we are within our labor market to weather a potential downturn, what we've seen is that home prices in Austin have moderated to such an extent that we haven't seen the same uptick in affordability constraints that the nation has. So, for example, the S&P Case-Shiller Home Price Index figures were released last Tuesday, May 30th, for the U.S. and for 20 cities Austin is not included in those 20 cities, but the index indicated that year over year in in March, home price growth measured about 0.7%. Meanwhile, our March housing statistics indicated that the median home price in Austin actually declined about 13%. And the reason why that's actually going to be advantageous to the Austin housing market and just the Austin economy overall is that, of course, over the past year, we've seen this significant uptick in mortgage rates. And with each increase in the mortgage rate, individuals' purchasing power is declining. So that slight, that modest decline in home prices in the Austin region has allowed us to has allowed affordability to remain essentially 
flat um, over the past year in Austin. So we haven't, we aren't experiencing, again, those affordability constraints that the broader U.S. is in the sense that home prices in the U.S. have remained essentially flat. But meanwhile, mortgage rates, of course, have gone up. So purchasing power has declined and first-time buyers are especially um, are especially susceptible to to that uptick in mortgage rates. And just to speak to that a little bit, you know, I think some of the sentiment that agents are working through with buyers especially is one of, you know, should should I wait and see? Should I wait and see if prices come lower? Um, you know, the market is cooling. It's going to continue to cool at a more aggressive rate later if we enter into a, a full-blown recession. Um, but the flip side of that is that we're absorbing the excess inventory that we might have experienced at the end of last year into the top of this year. So we're still constrained with regards to meeting demand. And there's no guarantee on what happens with interest rates, right? So what what do you say to the buyer that says, I think I'll wait and see it might be cheaper later? Sure. So firstly, we know that while mortgage rates may decline modestly through the second half of 2023, you know, we may see mortgage rates tick down to the high fives or low sixes. That's not a very considerable decline and certainly not one that's really going to amplify their purchasing power by any means. The second factor to consider is that we're actually seeing an uptick in active listings on a month-over-month basis. In other words, month supply has increased, and there are just more options available to buyers right now. So it's, I would argue, a good time to take advantage of the stock, the variety of stock in the Austin housing market. Yeah, taking advantage of the flexibility and not betting on a future that you can't bet on with regards to interest rates. Sure, sure. And each additional month that a potential buyer postpones that purchase is a month lost in home equity gains, for example. They're just delaying, they're delaying the accrual of wealth that we see time and again obtain via home ownership. That's a great point. That's a great point. Well, what are we seeing in the market week over week this week? Sure. So last week, on a week over week basis, closed sales ticked up considerably from 0.3% the week ending May 28th to 12.3% the week ending June 4th. Of course, it's important to remember that this week's stats span a long holiday weekend with Monday, May 29th having been Memorial Day. So it's certainly possible that folks delayed closing on their homes until after the Memorial Day holiday, which led to that surge in closings that we saw last week. Meanwhile, pending sales declined considerably. That is about 18% on a week-over-week basis. But that's also likely a phenomenon of the Memorial Day holiday. When we think about it, you know, losing that Monday to a holiday indicates that there is one less, less day of business for potential transactions to trickle through the market. And then meanwhile, the Austin region saw an uptick and new listings about a 9% increase from the previous week. And active listings rose a very modest 3%, but again, pointing to that increase in the supply of homes available to buyers. Yeah, which is great flexibility, certainly as compared to the last couple of years being so constrained and so tight and aggressive. You know, at the end of the day, these are still people purchasing homes, and th- that flexibility can be um, so helpful just in terms of the kind of emotional side of, of these transactions as well. Um, guys, just wanted to mention that if you missed our market shifts conversation and you want the opportunity to hear a more fully framed market update from Claire, we do have recordings available for purchase of that program. So hop on abor.com and be sure to check that out. And Claire, what could we expect next week? Which reports are dropping this week that we can tee up for everybody next week? So this week will actually be relatively quiet. Next week will be quite busy as the Fed will meet June 13th and 14th, and we'll see the May inflation numbers coming through. So get ready for a big week next week. But overall, 
we're anticipating that the Fed will pause its rate hike in June and maybe consider an additional rate hike in July. So we should see markets performing relatively well, i.e., um, you know, when, when we talk about markets, financial markets like the S&P 500, we'll probably see a boon after the Fed meeting. All right, great. Well, we'll look forward to what, what that conversation brings next week. Thanks so much for your time today. Thank you for having me. Thank you.